A new film, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, is once again shining a spotlight on Judy Bloom, author of the original novel for young readers and many other books that deal with issues of sexuality and adolescence rarely found elsewhere back when Bloom was writing. The books endeared her to generations of readers, but also brought contention, including bands that are once again front and center. Jeffrey Brown has part two of his report from Florida for our arts and culture series, Canvas. I love petting my books and taking care of my books. In 2023, at age 85, Judy Bloom is a bookstore owner in Key see. West, Florida. Oh, yeah. In 1970, she was a restless suburban New Jersey wife and mother when Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret came out, featuring an 11-year-old protagonist concerned with getting her first period and developing breasts. The book would change Bloom's life. I was a young writer and a new, a new writer. I was young in my life experiences. I may have been almost 30 when I wrote the book, and I had two kids. I was married. I was supposed to be a grown-up, but really, I was still growing up. When that book came out, I was so naive, I think, that I didn't even know to be anxious over reviews. What about I over, learned that. Yeah. <laughs> but what about the subject matter? Were you anxious over putting that into the world? I was not. And maybe the publisher was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Many books later, and some 90 million copies sold in 32 languages, Bloom and her publishers have done just fine. Did you know there was a movie? I, I heard that it's coming oh, out. So but it began, she says, with a simple and, for so many readers, relatable feeling. I was really writing it from what I remembered, from what I knew to be true. Yeah. I wanted to be normal. It's not that I wanted to be big or strong or anything else. I wanted to know that I was normal. That was the big thing. Just normal. Normal. Yeah. But normal I mean, just would have been good. Normal would have been good. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Her books for middle grade and young adults have made normal the inner realities and confusions of her characters and her readers. She also wrote books, including the Fudge series, for younger children and novels for adults, including Wifey, about an unhappy suburban housewife, not unlike Judy Bloom herself in her 30s, and 2015's In the Unlikely Event, which she called her final book. <laughs> Maybe so, but Bloom, happily married for 35 years to her third husband, George Cooper, is suddenly in the midst of a mini-renaissance, with the new film version of Margaret, an upcoming series based on Forever, her novel of teenage lovers, and two more in development, adapted from her novel for adults, Summer Sisters, and the Fudge series. There's also a documentary on her life, Judy Bloom Forever, that features celebrity and other women talking of the impact Bloom had on their lives. Over the years, Bloom has received thousands of letters from young people looking to her as someone they could confide in. Dear Judy, I'm in fifth grade and developing. It is kind of embarrassing. It brought her joy and friendships, but more. It was a huge responsibility. You felt that? Yeah, I did. Especially, you know, for all the kids who really needed to let out some kind of serious thing that was going on in their lives. I went to a therapist and I said, you have, you have to help me here because I want to save, their, I want to save this one and this one and this one. I, I, I have to save them. You felt personally you I have did. to save them. Yes, yeah. I did. And she said to me, your job isn't to save them. Your job is to be um, a friend that they can trust and you're there for them. And that's what you can do. But also, we talked about how to, you know, try and get professional help for the ones who really needed it, and to provide phone numbers and everything. It was very, very tough. Of course, it wasn't all about traumas. In 2004, I spoke to Bloom after she'd been honored by the National Book Foundation for her distinguished contribution to American letters. You read a very funny letter at the Book Awards. Uh, someone asked you to send what was it, the, uh, oh. the Facts of Life? Please send me the Facts of Life in number order. In number order. <laughs> I love that, yes. But, I'm I still mean, trying to figure that out. What <laughs> is the number order? A more serious issue Bloom is still dealing with, actions to ban books by her and others. 
According to the free speech advocacy group PEN America, several of Bloom's books were banned last fall in school districts in Texas, Pennsylvania, Utah, and here in Florida. Her book, Forever, has been on the American Library Association's list of the 100 most frequently challenged books since 1990. It's a battle she's fought since the 1980s and the rise of the Christian right. And it was pretty bad then, yeah. but nothing like what's going on now. There are people in power who um, want to control everything. She's fiercely critical of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and new requirements to review books based on a state list of guidelines. Critics say this has led to the removal of books focused on gender identity, sex, and race. One Florida bill would prevent the teaching of, or by some interpretations even talking about, menstruation before the sixth grade, even though studies show many girls first have their periods earlier. On Twitter, referring to her beloved 1970s novel, Bloom wrote, Sorry, Margaret. Your reaction to this bill? Cuckoo impossible, disgusting, fascist, I don't know, all, all of those words and many, many more. And I hear there are groups around here and they will say, this is what I think, this is what I've read, mm -hmm. that w we want to protect our children. Mm -hmm. We don't want them to read anything that isn't nice. We don't want them, you know, everything should have a happy ending. We don't want Basically, we don't want them to think. We don't want them to ask questions. You know, we just want their lives to be perfect. Well, that's not possible because lives are not perfect and kids have a lot going on and, and you can't control that. You cannot control that. Her solution, as always, books and more books. What gave her life as child, writer, and now bookstore owner. That's Cardboard Judy. Cardboard Judy. One thing Judy Bloom has never liked talking about, her legacy. Too highfalutin for her, perhaps. But amid this later in life re-blooming, she had an answer. I want a stone that says, are you there, God? It's me, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> but legacy having touched lives, I guess, you know. Well, that's a pretty big thing. That's a legacy. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Key West, Florida. Great interview with a living legend yeah, there. Absolutely.